Hey YouTube, so today we are talking about off-leash freedom, which is exactly kind of what we're doing right now. We're going for a walk with our dogs. We're not constantly calling them. We're not thinking about where they might be because they're just gonna stay in loose proximity, chilling out, and we're chilling out as well. Now, the cool thing is when we're out and about like this, actually, we put a large amount of responsibility mm. on our dogs. However, it's not always been like this mm. and it definitely is a process that we go through. And it's, a, it's something I suppose I feel quite expert in mm -hmm. compared to when I first started out in yep. any sort of dog training. I definitely used my lead as a bit of a crutch. Yeah. For a bit too long and also that you know you can easily get into those habits of constantly be calling your dog and effectively you're just getting like this yo-yoing where yeah they look, come back look at where they are right now for me this is something that they kind of learn this sort of sensible proximity that like tom said it's not like a yo-yo that they're constantly back and forth at mm -hmm. you but they're also not going very far and if, if we just stand still for a minute then actually what I like to see is at some point they'll clock and stop and kind of recognise that you're not necessarily walking forwards with them. Um, and for me, that's something that um, I really enjoy seeing. It's not mm. like a, a big like recall, mm. but it's also like they, hello guys, um, they also realise, and there's no sort of food and treats and yep. constant feeding. Yep. This is like almost um, games at its best. It's where it mm -hmm. becomes sort of real life strategy, yeah. right? And so... The key here is that unlike a, you know, a recall, unlike you know, anything, anything else, this, because it's so loose, because it's so free, because Very it's relaxed. so reliable, it's probably the biggest quality of life enhancer that you could have for owning your dog. Now, the, there's entire programs that we do on this, but the, the key here, guys, is that we want to give you some immediately actionable tips. And the first one is that actually, off-leash freedom starts probably with on-leash freedom. If you're walking along and your dog, your, your lead is looking more like a tether or a noose around, <laughs> around your dog to stop them from escaping, then actively we need to create some level of value for being close on lead first. Now, how does that look? Well, any of the games that you've probably seen us play with our dogs, any of the games that you would have learned in the Sexier Than a Squirrel challenge that you can get involved in at absolutedogs.me forward slash sexier game a day for 25 days play those games on lead at home play those games on lead out and about and it sounds so obvious but often people will say to us my dog's great with the games at home great in the garden um, but then how do I get them out and about and it actually starts with doing them on lead now the challenge is, is that mechanically you you holding that lead and playing the games requires a bit of a practice it asks from you. A lot of our owners, and actually for you guys, this is where your learning kicks in. But hey, we're having fun when we're mm -hmm. learning, we're growing, and you know what? It keeps us alive, it keeps us growing. So what we're saying is start where you're at. If you're not liking the picture of where you're at, then it's not the time to move it to the next level. There are levels to this. You might first of all think about have you got the level of engagement and proximity that you want at home first? Have you got the level of engagement and proximity on lead? How about if we switch that out for a long line? Now what happens if we take that lead off, see what we've got and maybe pop it back on again in a safe space? This is built up and it's all about that exchange of responsibility between you and your dog. Sometimes we put a lot of responsibility on our dogs here where their skills are appropriate for that. Other times we might take the responsibility and we might actually maybe pop them on lead. Now, another thing that I think is really important to consider is actually when um, we should consider what our dogs are rehearsing. Yeah. So actually, at some point, we need to consider what our dogs rehearse. Are we allowing them? Let's say we're training 10, 15, 20 minutes a day recalls mm -hmm. and proximity and making sure everything's cool. And then we go, go out for a woodland walk like this and we don't see our dog for half an hour. It feels like we've dropped them here and, and yeah. then there's no way, they're nowhere to be seen. They're hunting, they're dashing, they're in the forest. And it's like they've gone temporarily deaf for half an hour mm. or possibly longer. If we're allowing our dog to rehearse effectively non-compliance or uh, not being on board or mm -hmm. definitely not good teamwork, then actually what you'll probably and possibly and most likely get is more of that 
which they are doing. Yeah. So consider what your dog's rehearsing. Is your dog rehearsing ignoring you? Is your dog rehearsing disengaging from you? Is your dog rehearsing running around in the park like you dropped them there for a party and you're there to pick them up an hour later? Mm -hmm. Is your dog rehearsing non-relationship? If your answer to these questions is yes, then you may need to consider whether you carry on doing that for the next few weeks. That doesn't mean you should stop it for life. It just means you might need to interrupt it right now. Mm -hmm. Stop it for a few weeks. Stay still. There we go. Don't shout. So stop it for a few weeks and actually you can reintegrate it when you feel it's appropriate. Mm -hmm. Right now, we may not give our dogs that responsibility because they may not be at the stage where they can handle it. Yeah, absolutely. Next tip would be to move away from the thinking that this is about a transaction, right? So move away from thinking about you've got to show your dog what, they, um, what you have um, for them to come back and stay close. Instead, what we want you to think about is actually when they're, they're in loose proximity, when they're with you, when they're checking, you know, they're checking in, they're looking at you as they're off lead. How about we surprise them with an amazing experience? Yeah. Um, it's those amazing experiences that create good feelings in them. And just like, I mean, I, I think it's mad, but you might be one of these people that's, that gets addicted to exercise, right? You get addicted to exercise so because jealous. of that, that feeling that you have when, I don't know, you, you, I don't know, do an extra two minutes on the treadmill. I don't know what it is, whatever form it takes for you. The point is, is you're not being paid to do that. Instead, it's the it's the feeling, the, the emotion that comes about, There's the rush of endorphins and, and dopamine. Yeah, it's a sen sense of you want to do it, you don't have yeah. to do it, and you certainly are on board for that experience. And like Tom and I said, we're very jealous in the exercise <laughs> experience. So if any of you have ideas for us, please do. Um, but most of all, I think this is really important. It's not just an exchange for sort of treats and food and mm. it it definitely is a whole experience and once you get that experience mm -hmm. right you will not look back yeah absolutely a simple way that you can immediately start to do that on your walks is to actually replace simply feeding your dog a piece of food when they check in with you or when they stay close actually um, reward them with a game so reward them with an experience an interaction yeah that game involves food but you're adding layers you're building this picture you're creating really yourself as something that is full of variety Variety is unpredictable, is exciting, and gives good feeling. Just like that squirrel. Yeah, absolutely. So, guys, there were just a few tips on off-leash reliability. I have and to freedom. say, I, I do feel like we really have um, sort of fine-tuned and honed mm. in, and like made a real le level of expertise for this. Without um, that, I think we wouldn't have so many students all over the world experiencing way more off-leash mm -hmm. freedom than yeah. ever before. And it, it, and you know, it comes back to this. This is the probably the single biggest quality of life enhancer that you could do right now and, and commit to having more on-leash freedom first, more off-leash freedom means better quality and of life. For both your dog and for your health, and I have to say like all over the world needing better mental health, you know what, this is the answer. Yeah. Being out and about in nature with a beautifully behaved dog, I mean, that's a huge win. So YouTubers, make sure that you share this wide. Dog owners all about, they need to hear this. This is something we want to help with, we want to grow. We're making it our mission to help owners and their dogs experience the joy that we do each and every day. So watch this space, hit subscribe and hit share and we will see you next time. Remember Game Changers, whatever the dog owning struggle, there's a game for that. If you haven't already, remember to subscribe to our channel. And check out our new 25 day online dog training challenge. Watch the videos, play the games, transform your dog owning struggles. As a loyal YouTube subscriber, you can get a 70% discount through the link in the description below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the number one most transformational dog training podcast on iTunes and Spotify, the Sexier Than a Squirrel podcast. And remember to follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more live teaching, video content, and free training using the links in the description.